pressuring people. When force is applied, conflict and argument follow. The group feeble degenerates. The climate is hostile and is neither open nor nourishing. The wise leader runs the group without fighting to have things a certain way. The leader's touch is light. The leader neither defends nor attacks. Remember that consciousness and not selfishness is both the means of teaching and the teaching itself. Group members will challenge the ego of someone who leads egocentrically, but the person who leads selflessly and harmoniously will grow and endure. There are times when it seems as if you must intervene powerfully, suddenly, and even harshly. The wise leader does this only when all else fails. As a rule, the leader feels more wholesome when the group process is flowing freely and unfolding naturally. Harsh interventions are a warning that the leader may be uncentered or have an emotional attachment to whatever is happening. Even if harsh interventions succeed brilliantly, there is no cause for celebration. There has been injury. Someone's process has been violated. Later on, the person whose process has been violated may well become less open, more dependent. There will be a deeper resistance and possibly resentment. Making people do what you think they ought to do does not lead toward clarity and consciousness. While they may do what you tell them to do at the time, they will cringe inwardly, grow confused, and plot revenge. Such a victory is actually a failure. The soap smells. The single principle of Tao can be found everywhere, all the time. Everything works according to it. Every life unfolds according to it. Its greatness lies in its universality. It is all-inclusive. The wise leader follows this principle and doesn't act selfishly. The wise leader doesn't accept one person and refuse to work with another. The wise leader doesn't own people or control their lives. Leadership is not a matter of winning. All behaviors contain their opposites. Hyperinflation leads to collapse. A show of strength suggests insecurity. What goes up must come down. If you want to prosper, be generous. And the feminine outlasts the masculine. The feminine allows, but the masculine causes. The feminine surrenders, then encompasses and wins. Learn to see things backwards, inside out, and upside down. Natural events are potent because they act in accordance with how things work. They simply are. Study natural processes. The light in the sky, the gravity of earth, the unfolding of your own ideas and insights, the emptiness of space, the fullness of life, and the behavior of saints. Imagine what would happen if these processes were neurotic and self-centered. Gravity varies from moment to moment. Your mind is irrational. Space is agitated. A lazy sky flickers. Life is abortive. The saints are worthless models. Nothing works. The wise leader knows better than to be neurotic and self-centered. Potency comes from knowing what is happening and acting accordingly. Paradoxically, freedom comes from obedience to the natural order. Since all creation is a whole, separateness is an illusion. Like it or not, we are team players. Power comes through cooperation, independence through service, and a greater self through selflessness. The wise leader learns how things happen and lives accordingly. The average leader also learns how things happen but vacillates, sometimes acting accordingly and then forgetting. The worst leaders learn how things happen and dismiss the single principle as nonsense. After all, they say, any principle that does not get you love or money or power must be useless. Selflessness is no way to get ahead. Virtue is for fools. Kindness is weakness. And so on. 
This is a problem. If you could people who do not speak how they burr, burr. naturally think that the wise leader's behavior has no basis in reality. So the leader